Juliana Carella, the CEO of Monte Dolores and Dreamfuls. Okay. Hi, I'm Jeff Hub. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Women Grow. We're a professional <laughs> networking organization. Uh, I'm Austin Keith. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Popbox. Hi, I'm Keith Hoffman. I am the co-founder of a website called Prohibited. I'm Doug. I own Hitman Glass. Um, and I also throw the Chalice Festival. We're going to talk about uh, new media, uh, how it impacts their their company, and uh, we're going to start with Kiev because Kiev's company is actually a new media company. We kind of were looking at the landscape out there, and we kind of recognized that there wasn't really a place that we really wanted to go. And kind of came out and wanted to go. It was like very highly stylized. That um, had a lot of the. The, the branding that you know, we were used to from you know, the other, uh, other uh, industries that we were working in. And we started looking at the space and we started to recognize that there was just a, you know, a need for this out there. So, you know, we see video is really an editorial and content is really our biggest focus. And you know, what we're seeing is that people really want snackable content. Um, Austin, why don't we go with you next? Uh, you um, are as much crossing new media with your subscription service as uh, anyone. It's where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Hotbox, like it sounds, is hot in the box. Uh, we're a Birch Box for me. It's a monthly subscription club um, that instead of it being dog toys or coffee, it is we. Um, so you tell us uh, what type of cannabis you enjoy, and then each month uh, we ship that to you. So for us, you know, when I think of new media, I think of all of the challenges that uh, are only present for cannabis companies. Um, when you talk about startups, 99% of them fail. So if you're going to start a business, you just need to be comfortable with that fact that the likelihood is that you're going to fail. So when you do that in cannabis, then you have banking issues, then you have advertising issues. Um, you know, new media almost becomes your enemy. But the interesting thing from Hotbox's perspective is by all of these large platforms um, going out and banning cannabis companies and really alienating cannabis users is that our community has rallied around things like mass groups and Kush Common. Social media is a crazy tool. I mean, you can master it uh, or think you can master it, but ultimately, um, it's how much time and energy you put into it. It's tough to manage not just one company, but multiple companies' social media. <laughs> I don't think there's enough organic stuff out there, and I'm having trouble even like maintaining that myself, you know, like for all the businesses. And, and that's why you kind of got to delegate authority on these things. And, well, we, I think we've noticed this trend in cannabis that every decision we make is a double-edged sword. You know, if you do advertising, then you can get shut down. A, a, you're the licensee for Bang, and our social media was shut down. We have 60,000 Instagram followers. And this is scary, too. Like, I'm at 106,000 followers, and I could get shut down tomorrow. And then what? You're, like, rebuilding it again. And then, uh, you know, I saw Coral even, who, you know, she's over there and she's a huge ambassador for this industry and you know she's been getting harassed via IG and getting her shit shut down over and over again and like I'm scared of that so I'm like holding back of like do I post a lot of hash oil? Do I post a few like this over the hash? Or is this natural? How organic can you be without like worrying about what you're building being like taken out, you know, the carpet taken out from under you and like and then you know you see some huge corporation like Marley's Naturals, not to hate or anything, because all the respect to whoever's doing that, I'm not hating, I'm just saying like, why aren't they getting harassed? Why aren't people in this, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, it's, again, it's all politics, but like, this is the core group of people, and like, we shouldn't be getting harassed, you know what I mean? And like, if I'm building this shit and putting time and energy into something to get it taken away tomorrow, it's scary for me, and like, I don't know. Yeah. It's tough. So, so the uh, interesting things about our industry, you know, it's the new great American industry, is uh, there is no so-called glass ceiling. I mean, when you didn't have a corporation before, uh, it's very easy to have whoever is capable be the head of that corporation. And uh, a good example of that would be the uh, group that Jasmine and, and 
her fellow co-founders, including Jane West, started of Women Grow. Wait, how did you all first find out about cannabis? Like back when you were 14 or whatever, like, like how did you figure out that this thing existed? It was awesome. Older brother, your my dad. dad. Yeah, for me, it was my dad too. Um, and, and isn't that amazing? So someone had to tell you, right? Like there was there was a communication that came to you, and you said, "Oh, I'll try this," and you did, and, and you're here now. So I know how it went. <laughs> you needed that communication. There was no way you knew that this was available to you, and other people thought it was pretty awesome unless that communication came to you. So I want you to think about new media as just a different communication method. Many of you guys started by telling your friends, and you're very comfortable in a one-on-one -on -one conversation telling someone why cannabis is important and why they should try it, right? Like, everybody here can sit somebody down and say, hey, this is how cannabis affects my life, you should try it, blah, blah, blah. And all we're doing with new media is scaling those conversations larger. I don't have time to meet every woman that I would like to meet and invite her into the cannabis industry. But I do have communication methods that are gonna reach her. Now we're talking about the Periscope and platforms and, and building your brand and uh, just to be able to have this kind of forum is uh, sort of a breath of fresh air and I, I must uh, say it's somewhat surreal to sit here when I used to go to the panels about what do you say to the cops when they pull you over. And we so still that, need those. It's, it's a nice change and, and a segue. So when we started we, we weren't involved with social media at all. Um, three years in, at around 2010, 2011, I hired somebody to do social media for us, and within probably two months, our sales just like went up probably 30%. Just just by having the opportunity for our brand to reach so many people that we didn't have that opportunity otherwise because we were too busy worrying about how not to get arrested or what to say when we get pulled over. I mean, those were the things that, um, as an organization at that time, we were more focused on than anything else.